Hi, welcome to the Glow Getters podcast or the Leadership Collaborative YouTube channel. I'm Kayla, depending on where you're listening. Welcome. So I'm experimenting. You guys know that if you've been with me for a while that I'm a scientist. If you're new here, welcome. So I'm doing an experiment. I've done it once or twice before, but I'm going to continue and see how it goes. Um, I won't lie. This is the first time I've gotten ready um, in a while, and it's the first time today, and I'm recording this, and it's 2.18 p.m. Um, working from home and COVID and all of that has made it hard to show up like as I normally would have when I was originally working in the office. And so lately I've not wanted to do YouTube videos um, because I'm like, I just don't want to show up on camera. It's energy draining. However, when I pick myself up and at least wash my face, do my hair a little bit, I feel better. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try it today. That being said, I have the podcast platform, which is totally created so you can do podcasting in your pajamas. And so some weeks I might feel more moved to be on camera and other weeks I might just do podcast episodes. But one thing's for sure, if I record a video, I'll always post the audio on the podcast so that if you're on the go, you can at least listen to the audio because I know there's a lot of you out there like me who like to listen to podcasts while you're doing laundry, cooking, cleaning, taking a shower, going for a walk, whatever it is. So I want you to have the information at your fingertips. But I also know that a lot of us are longing for human connection. And if you get a little bit of that by seeing me on the screen, then they, that makes me happy. So, um, oh, I should probably turn the notifications off on my phone as I'm recording this. So I am excited to be here today to talk to you about communication. So this week in the Leadership Collaborative, which is my community where I coach and mentor others on leadership, help people find success in their daily lives when it comes to leadership. I do monthly themes around different leadership topics, and I just got this group, this community started a few months ago, and it's growing, and I'm excited about it. And November's theme was making work visible or using visual management for your work. And part of that is communicating with visuals and um, how do you make communication clearer with visuals for your team, for you, for a leader, whatever you need to communicate. So this um, podcast and this video is dedicated to um, teaching you a mnemonic slash it could be a visual, it, it, it is a visual, to communicate clearly. Um, but I want to first just talk about like the why and a little bit more about um, this topic. So I don't know if you all follow Brene Brown. If you're not following her, you need to be following her. Um, she has a Netflix um, show on vulnerability as well. She is a researcher and social worker. I think she has her PhD and she's a licensed social worker. And she talks a lot about leadership and vulnerability and she has a lot of famous books out there. So you can find them. One of the things that really, really stuck with me when I was reading her book, and I don't remember if it's in Daring Greatly or Dare to Lead, but she says, um, clear is kind. And Clear is kind. So when I heard that, when I think about leadership, I think about so often when we are having conversations and even giving feedback with others, when we're wishy-washy, when we're um, sugarcoating things, when we're being indirect and expecting people to read our minds and like know the same things that we know, that's not kind. That's actually can be very manipulative and it can be really um, and it can feel icky um, to the especially to the person who's receiving that feedback or is on the receiving end of you being indirect. Um, it's funny because I always thought that maybe a lighter touch was kind because no one wants to feel sort of attacked. And when you think about the Midwest, I live in Minnesota, um, I'm from Wisconsin. Uh, passive aggressiveness is something that people talk about all the time, like, oh, they're just nice to your face, and then behind your back, they're not, right? So there's this whole thing that's like, just tell me straight up, you know, what you need me to hear so I can do a better job. 
Um, but a lot of us are uncomfortable having those direct conversations. But then I heard this comment by Brene Brown and she said, clear is kind. And I thought about that too. And I thought, gosh, how many times have I been led down the wrong path or not made a tweak to my presentation or whatever, because I didn't really fully understand what the person was trying to communicate to me. And had I just had like straight facts, no sugarcoating, no emotions in there, I probably could have done better sooner. And when I found out what the person really meant, I felt like icky because I felt like, oh, I've been living a lie. <laughs> or or more like, oh, I wish I had just had no. Now I feel like sort of awkward for not knowing. So clear is kind. I also think of the movie The Sound of Music. I don't know if you guys have heard me talk about this before, but um, Julie Andrews is like, I don't know, one of my idols. <laughs> I swear my grandmother is like Julie Andrews. That's what I'm just going to say she is, yeah, because I want her to be. But anyways, um, there's a song where she's heading from the Abbey to the children's house, and she's on the bus, and she's sort of like singing the song that's sort of talking herself up into um, like taking care of these seven children. And she says like, I will be firm but kind. I don't even know. That was like totally shrill and horrible. <laughs> but I'm not editing it because it's real life. But she says like, seven children, heaven bless them. They will look up to me and mind me. <laughs> and, and basically she's saying like, I'm going to be firm with them. Like I'm going to be their like mother figure, but I'm also going to be kind. And it reminds me like when I'm working to communicate with people that um, when I'm clear and direct, I can still be kind and I can still have my lightness of touch on um, um, the messaging and I can still tell a story, but I can be really clear and get what I need and what I want. um, And and that's kindness. Um, There's another book that's uh, related to leadership and kindness Gosh, I wish I had looked it up. I'm just going to quick, like, Google it. Kindness Leadership book um, that I have read a while ago. It's probably not going to come up now. Do, do, do. Oh, gosh, I don't know. But it's all about, like, you can be kind in the workplace and still lead and people are not going to think you don't have a backbone anyways so that is like the basis for one reason why I think it's really important to have clear communication because you'll get what you want you'll get what you want and need faster and people are going to respect you for just giving them the information okay so let's dive in into the pneumatic mnemonic device that I'm going to teach you it's called s bar so it's s b a r And each letter stands for something different. And it's a tool to help you know how to communicate. So S is situation, B is background, A is assessment, and R is recommendation. So I am going to put a link to a free template in the show notes or the description of this video. So if you want the template or just want to check it out, um, please go get that for me. It's free. I wanted you guys to see sort of how I lay out my S-bars. And so S-bar is a communication tool that's often used in healthcare. If you're a nurse or a nurse leader, you probably have used this and it's often used in like shift transitions or handoffs. So say I was going to dis- um, hand off a patient to a new nurse or a new floor, or maybe I was calling a physician or a provider and I needed to share information, um, I might use SBAR. Um, it's also used to ask or negotiate or, or make requests in my ro- world. So anytime I have to ask for a piece of expensive equipment or I need to ask for um, more full-time equivalents or FTEs to increase my personnel or Anytime I want to just let my boss know, give her an update about something, I use the S bar because it really, really simplifies everything. So situation, if you're going to communicate something or you're going to ask for something, um, you want to be able to say the situation in one or two sentences. It can obviously be a paragraph for each of these, but I think the shorter 
is more concise, is clearer, and it's easier for people to say yes to whatever you're asking or whatever you need or just have a quick understanding of a situation. So situation is the problem. So clearly stating the problem. And that's where when you're writing this, this as far out, you might have to write like the long hand, like every single thing that you're thinking of, and then go back and edit it out. Because I often find that as a leader, there's all this backstory about how I got to where I am today to need to write an SBAR. And the people that I'm asking or have a request to, they probably don't need to know all of the fluff. They need to know directly like cause and effect or like how much work you've done before you are asking. Um, they don't need to know like so-and-so like this equipment broke and then he tried to fix it. It didn't work and blah, 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 blah. We just need to know it's unrepairable, you know, and, and we need to purchase a new one because this current equipment can't be serviced. Something like that. So clearly write out your problem in a statement of one or two sentences. The second one is background. Background is the context. It's how we got there. So a situation might be, um, this is like a real example from work. I have a broken um, sterile welder. Basically, it's something that welds tubing together. My um, my situation would be, I have two broken sterile welders in the blood bank, and we um, cannot operate or we cannot make red cell splits without it, right? The background would be... Um, the equipment is 10 years old, the warranty was five years old, uh, Biomed checked it out, was unable to repair, um, unable to be serviced by the company, the equipment is um, not, uh, they don't cover it under service plans, it's too old, blah, 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 blah. And then the assessment would be the data of the current state and where we are going if we don't solve the problem. So it's basically the risk if we don't solve the problem. Um, if you are sharing just like, here's what's up, this might be like, here's current state and here's where we're going. Um, and so you might share in this example, um, it's gonna cost this much money to purchase the splits directly from a supplier, uh, you know, we are losing this much on reimbursement, blah, 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 blah. And if we don't purchase a new one, it's going to cost this much for the rest of the year and people engagement is going to go down, whatever. The last word is R, which is recommendation. And it would be, what are we going to do about the problem? Or what would you propose we do about the problem? So I always like to phrase the recommendation something like this. To avoid X risk, we should blank. To avoid paying half a million dollars more annually to blah, 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 we should purchase two new sterile welders for X dollars. Um, so really, this is like, I think one of the most important parts is, you know, it's great to have your story and sort of that emotional buildup with the data. But the most important thing is the ask, being super, super clear on what it is that you need. Um, because at the end of the day, even though you might be dealing with personnel issues or ugh, broken equipment and biomed and repairs and all these things, at the end of the day, you're just asking for some money to buy some new equipment. Um, the leaders who are approving these types of decisions don't need to know all the emotional things that you've gone through. Um, they just need to know how they can help. Help me help you is something you can always think about. Like if they're going to say to you, help me help you, what would you say you need to be helped? Um, and this also goes for if you're just communicating something, hey, I recommend that we monitor the situation to avoid X risk, something like that. So again, you can use SBAR to help you communicate problems, give status updates. I often use it when I'm typing emails um, because it f I find that I'm, I love to be wordy and I love prose, but if I can actually like cut all that out, <clears throat> excuse me, um, people appreciate brevity in emails and they want to know like, what am I supposed to do after reading this? What's my action? And so actually like having the SBAR format helps me do that. Um, 
you can, you'll see in the template that I'm sharing, the nice thing about SBAR is the formatting. So I always write like situation in bold, recommend uh, background, assessment, recommendation in bold, and then all my wording is underneath that. And so they know like I'm using the SBAR format. It's very clear, like situation, <coughs> excuse me, I need some coffee. <clears throat> Sorry about that guy. Got dry in here. So they know that I'm using the SBAR format, situation, background, assessment, recommendation. And um, they're going to be like, wow, that's awesome. This is so organized. I know exactly what you need. And then if you don't hear back from the person, if you're sending it via email, or um, then you can follow up and, and ask, like, what wasn't clear in this message? How can I... Um, help you understand more. They might have a few more questions. You can also use this verbally and just share verbally your SBAR. This is often what nurses do where they will um, talk over the phone to a provider and they'll share an SBAR format. So you can use this with your team too. Hey guys, um, last week I know you heard this news about our organization. Um, we are struggling financially. That's the situation. Background. Um, over the last few years, we've lost some accounts here, and um, we are really hurting in these areas. Assessment, uh, you know, currently, here's where we're at financially. If we don't change, we're going to end up here, and so we had to make a few decisions. So recommendation from our leaders was that we need to tighten up on the overtime and reduce as many incidental overtime uh, hours as possible. Can you help me with this? And easy, you can just do it in a stand-up meeting and you can see it takes a matter of seconds. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and listening to the podcast. Um, I feel like I'm a little rusty because I haven't done a video or a podcast in a few weeks, but I'm um, getting back to it. And, you know, COVID times, it just takes a lot of our mental and physical energy. So I just want to give you permission to rest more. Like I have been trying to do um, and not put so much pressure on yourself to produce. Um, focus on being. You know, we're human beings and we're not human doings. I think this is hard to remember sometimes because, you know, if you're anything like me in leadership, you know, sometimes we base our value or our worth on our, you know, how much of our checklist we've gotten done. And that's something I've been really working on. And I want to teach it to you as well. Like, you are worth so much more than your checklist. Um, just, I wish I could be in a room and sit with you all because I know that I would just feel so much wonderful, warm, loving energy. And I hope you can feel that through the screen or through the podcast. It's not the same as being in person, but we will get there someday. I am continuing to be an optimist, but I'm also staying safe at home and uh, as much as possible. So I hope you all take care and please, please reach out to me on Instagram at Kayla Fahey Arndt. Send me a DM, engage with my posts um, so I can hear from you. And I want to really build community around these leadership topics. And if you're not already subscribed um, to the, the um, YouTube channel, please subscribe and please subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss the next episode. All right, guys, I hope you all take care. Until next time, be safe. Bye.